Please take your Bibles and turn to the book of Proverbs chapter 15, and we will read in verse 4. The Bible said, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Winston Churchill made this statement. He said, In the course of my life, I've often had to eat my words, and I must confess that I've always found it a wholesome diet. So the words that he had to eat kept him well fed. We enjoy talking. We, we enjoy having serious conversations. We enjoy having biblical conversations. Uh, we enjoy, uh, uh, you know, discussing things that bring us to great laughter. I mean, we have a great time talking, do we not? Amen. Yes, three of us. So we also enjoy our, our, our friendships, and our friendships are full of words. The, uh, the essayist from the 1800s named Charles Lamb, he made this statement, and this is so true. He said, friendship is being able to, ta ta to talk nonsense and having that nonsense respected. That had come to you at about 2 o'clock in the morning. That was pretty good. Our words can also be very helpful, but they can also be very hurtful. That's why we must rely on the direction of the Lord in our words and our actions, and our, our words must be guided by God. In the book of Job, the Bible says, Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. In Job 27, verse 2, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, and the Almighty, who hath vexed my soul, all the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. So here in our text of verse, it says a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. And really, that's saying a lot, and there's a lot of depth to it. The more you meditate on, the, on passages, all, all the Word of God, but you just realize there is so much in this. See, this word wholesome means curative. It means medicine, a cure, or a remedy. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. It brings healing, a medicine, cure, a remedy. I want to ask you to look with me in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 18, please. Proverbs 12, 18, the Bible says, There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. See, people say sticks and stones, uh, whatever, may break my bones, but the words will never hurt me. Yes, they will hurt you. They are hurtful. They can be hurtful. But notice what the end of the verse says. But the tongue of the wise is health. <laughs> okay, Proverbs 16, 24. So the Bible said in, in verse 24, Pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. The honeycomb. So a wholesome tongue... An example of this is found also in, if we would, in look with me in Proverbs 15 and verse 2. And let me give you some things about a wholesome tongue. Uh, a wholesome tongue, is in it, and the example of it is in verse 2, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge or right. So a wholesome tongue is using knowledge or right, knowing when to speak, a, a word fitly spoken. So there's times when I need to speak and there's Times when I need to be quiet. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 15, you can write this down. What the Bible teaches us about a wholesome tongue is that it speaks truth, but it speaks that truth in love. So in that verse it says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which he, the, uh, is the head, even Christ. So a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21, the Bible said, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So a wholesome tongue also is God-honoring. Go with me to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17, please. Colossians 3, 17. And we'll, we'll keep your finger in the New Testament, because I'm also going to ask you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. So a wholesome tongue is God-honoring. Colossians 3.17, and, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, 
And whatsoever you do in word or do, deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Okay, so think with me just a little bit. How many lives have actually been impacted by what we say? Uh, my, my tendency is, uh, I don't know about you, but my tendency is to look on the things I should not have said and say, man, I shouldn't have said that. I think the older you get, the wiser you get, the more quiet you get. But here's something that's encouraging. How many more opportunities are still ahead of you to influence others with your words? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, please. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. So in verse 4, it says, But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. Okay, <clears throat> so in this verse, Paul is saying God entrusted us with the gospel. Okay, do you know the gospel? Are you saved? Then God's entrusted you with the gospel, right? Now notice what he says here. So the thought is this. Here's what we're thinking about. We're thinking about imparting of truth. So how many more opportunities do I have in my life instead of just going around being quiet all the time? There's nothing wrong with being quiet. That saves me a lot of grief. But there's a time when I need to speak. Notice what it says. But as we were allowed, we've got to be in, put in trust with the gospel. Even so, we speak not as pleasing men, but God which tryeth our hearts. Hey, we're in a day where, where maybe you think, well, nobody wants to hear. Well, somebody does. And, and, it's, and I'm going to speak and speak the truth. I speak it in love. I speak it seasoned with salt. But here, look on me in Psalm 35 and verse 28. And think about the power of influence that you have in the lives of other people. So in Psalm 35, verse 28, And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. So as our text verse says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, what, 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 what is contained within that? Well, there's more than what I'm going to say, but here's some things. Truth, kindness, gentleness, meekness, wisdom, reproof, Instruction, guidance, comfort, blessing, and healing to a troubled soul. In the future, how many testimonies, in the future, how many testimonies will be shared by what you have said? How many times we go to funerals and we reflect back on what they said? What words did they say to us? Your words do matter. But how many, listen, how many testimonies have already been shared by what you have already said? That's what ought to make you tremble. And it ought to really make you reflect back on the life of Zacharias saying, thinking, what is really the motive of what I am saying? So it says it's a tree of life. You know, we don't have a lot of recorded conversation between the man Barzillai and, and David himself. But Barzillai, if you would examine that, that portion of Scripture in, in, in 1 Samuel, we know that Barzillai came into the life of David. Barzillai was an older man, an aged man, and, and then he's, God calls him a very great man. And he comes in the life of David, and he's a help to David when David is running. And, and if you, you, you think about what I, and I must reflect back on what Winston Churchill said also, when he was rescued as a POW, uh, and, and he was uh, taken out of Africa, when he spoke of the, of the love and appreciation he had for those men that came to get him, he said, we have moved beyond the realm of words. And David had those that were close to him and loyal and brave, and really, as in their fleeing, if, if all the people that were there with David in fleeing, David was, the have to have, David was the one that really felt the issue of the heartache of Absalom coming against him, his own son. The, the betrayal, the fear, the utter, the, really the utter instability of, a, of, of just him fleeing for his life. There may be somebody in this room or somebody that will listen to the video that have certainly fled for their life. 
But few, few of us have ever been in that kind of condition. But when Barzillai stepped into his life, the Bible doesn't say much, but here's what we do know. Barzillai made such an impact in the life of David that David mentions the man and his sons on his deathbed, and he also makes sure that they're taken care of in the future. <laughs> the habitation of Chimham. Look on me in 1 Samuel chapter 30, please, and notice what it says. 1 Samuel 30 and uh, verse 6. So before we read this verse, I just want to share with you because this, this is a little bit of a transition in the thought. So Barzillai is a great comfort to David. But when you come to 1 Samuel 30, you realize that those that are with, not, are not, those that are with you are not necessarily with you. We really learn that in the life of David. In 1 Samuel 30 and verse 6, here's the comparison I want to give. Barzillai comforts him, brings him provisions, but in this, he's among his own men, and they're, they're, they're betraying him. And notice what the Bible said, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because of the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Hey, there are times when you and I have to encourage ourselves in the Lord that we don't have anyone from the outside to step in and say, hey, here's, here, here's the comfort. This is what God's going to do in your life. You're bound in the bundle of life. And then acknowledge God sent you to save me from, from much violence. I understand. Okay, there's times when God brings people in your life and there's times when you and I have an opportunity to be able to step up into people's lives. We need to understand that what we say when we're repeating the Bible and we're encouraging them for the word of God, it is, a, it is, a, it is wholesome. A wholesome tongue is is a tree of life. It has healing. It may have reproof. It has instruction and guidance, truth, kindness, all these different things that you can be a blessing to other people. I want you to look at me in 2 Corinthians and, and, and how uh, we look at the scriptures and how great the supply, if we think about Barzillai bringing the supply to David, we don't know the conversations. We know the later conversation that Barzillai and David had because David David invited him to the kingdom. But I want you to listen to the testimony that's given in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3. Your words matter. Your words matter. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Okay, here's the deal. David had to encourage himself in the Lord. There's sometimes, you, you and I cannot be looking for external uh, stability other than in God. So it's not my life is based upon the reliance of someone else encouraging me there are times, and if you abide in the Word of God, especially in the days of peace, when the days of, when the days of trouble come, you can just encourage yourself in the Lord, knowing God's going to take care of you. But friend, what God does in those times is God builds you so that you can go in turn and be a help and be a blessing to somebody else. Wholesome words, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, and you see that with the, with the story of Joseph. See, go with me to Genesis chapter 50 and verse 21. Genesis 50, 21. You know the story of Joseph. His brothers had, um, they were actually talking about killing him. They wound up selling him into slavery. They were envious. They were just jealous, jealous uh, in their behavior. They're very wicked what they did to him, but God used it. And then later when the famine comes, then all the brothers come back because they're all starving, including Jacob. And, and to prevent from uh, starvation, they go to Egypt to buy corn. They crawl on their face before the leader that, that has been put in place by Pharaoh, and it was their own brother. They didn't recognize him. He spoke by an interpreter to them. However, when, when they gather all together and he exposes himself, there's something that as, as he, 
uh, acknowledges who he is and identifies himself, he, this happens. Joseph says to them, Now, therefore, fear you not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Your words matter. Now, whether those guys ever got to the place where they uh, fully trusted Joseph, it didn't matter. Listen, listen. There's going to be times when you're trying to be a blessing to people and people look at your motives. Well, maybe they're doing that because of this. If you do it because God told you to do it, it doesn't matter what people think. You just do what God told you to do. You be an encouragement when, when God tells you to be an encouragement. There's times when you face uh, difficulty and there's times when people don't prepare right and they're responding in a wrong way. Just respond in kindness. You, you, you don't have to uh, give a response back that's equally as wicked as theirs is to, to, to solve the problem. That's not going to solve the problem. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Joseph, none of us have ever faced what he faced. But when he had an opportunity to be godly and an opportunity to be able to respond to his brothers, he responded to them in godly love, seasoned with salt, and the promise of prosperity, I'm going to take care of you and your little ones. Yes. Your words matter. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.